Oh, welcome into the Rob Bro Show. It's a little darker in here. It's because the eclipse is happening. If you're outside watching the eclipse, good for you. I've never been much of an eclipse guy. I am the host. You are the host. Cool. You can co-host today by commenting on the starting line chat line. Starting line chat line brought to you by starting line counseling. Find more about them at startinglinecounseling.com. Uh, if you're going through an eclipse in your own life, uh, reach out. It never hurts. Starting line counseling. Dot com free 15 minute consultation there waiting for you or in person gunner texas all right uh an eclipse happened yesterday on twitter the what should be the biggest story in college basketball all year long the national championship game was absolutely dwarfed by arkansas and their coaching search and just hours mere hours beforehand Ryan Money Mainville and myself on the Gambling Gout Shows were talking about how poorly that search was going because they were swinging and missing on everyone. And whoever they hired was going to feel like a third or fourth choice. And then Tyson Chicken <laughs> and Walmart and Jerry Jones of the Dallas Cowboys swung their big old forearms onto the table and said, we'll commit $15 million plus, what was the buyout? $32 million to Kentucky. Yes. And $15 million salary slash NIL. And I, I have said this in the past that coaches will start to have NIL tied into that salary. It'll be a bonus pool. But they have $15 million guaranteed to Coach Cal in his first year. Again, that salary slash, I don't know what it is one way or the other, but Coach Cal uh, allegedly, by all accounts, heading to Arkansas from Kentucky. Now the next course of action, who's going to be the Kentucky coach? But how surprised were you with that uh, shocking news yesterday? Kind of making you forget everything else that's happened in this tournament. It's Coach Cal, 2024 will forever be the year Coach Cal left Kentucky for Arkansas. Yeah, scale of one to ten, how shocked was I? Uh, like a fifteen. Yeah. To see, like that's the thing. Now we saw everybody saw it early in the day, where some journalists posted, you know, John Calipari in serious conversations, close to nearing a deal with Arkansas to become the next Razorback head basketball coach. I'm sitting there going, didn't believe. I, I know April Fools was last week, but like it is April. People are still trying to do things that like pull pranks and. And all those things. Uh, then you see Sham Saranya post it later in the day, and you're like, oh, crap, there's some weight to this. Like, Arkansas is throwing some bills out. And then you start getting the uh, the the information of the Jerry Joneses, the Tyson Chickens, the the Walmarts, the Jones, uh, you know, the that family is, is pushing money into it. As Alan said, Jerry put all his free agency money into Arkansas basketball. Yeah. That's another question. Um, that's another conversation, but yeah, it's close to, especially that $30 million plus buyout at Kentucky for John Calipari. Now look, had John Calipari ran his course at Kentucky, probably so. Like I think even big blue nation, as they call themselves in, in Kentucky was kind of like, you know, thanks for everything you've done for us. It's been a great ride, but it might be time for something new because what's going on right now just hasn't worked well in the last few years. Um, because if you're at Kentucky, it's about winning national championships. It's about going to final fours at the very least. And that, that hasn't been done in quite a while, um, for Kentucky at their standards. Um, so I don't remember the last time Kentucky was in a final four. Do you, it was probably, uh, closer to, uh, uh, 2015. Yeah. So almost 10 years ago, 2015. They, is that when they went undefeated and lost to Wisconsin? Yes. Yes, because they did not win a national championship. The only national championship Cal has won is in 2012. So, uh, no, no, that was, yeah, 14, 15, 38 and one. Yeah. They went to the final four and lost 18 0 in conference play, 38 and one. They've not been back to the final four, two elite eights, uh, one sweet 16. But since 2020, uh, missed the tournament, round of 64, exit, 
round of 32 exit, round of 64 exit. They've not been to the second weekend since 2019. Yeah, yeah the, cra- the crazy part is, is that, you know, Tubby Smith went to the Final Four in 2008 with Kentucky. Now all those wins have been vacated um, because of what was going on. 2009, didn't have a great year. Kentucky, gone. See ya. Uh, it had a lot to do with the reason the wins were vacated as well, obviously. But uh, Calipari comes in, and and then he goes 2011, 12, 14, 15. He wins a national championship in 2012. But he's in Final Four. He's in contention for national titles. Like, that's where Kentucky wants to be. But since 2015, and then since 2019, you said it. They haven't even made it to the second weekend. So – that's in its own self is is a reason I think Calipari was ready to leave because it just wears on you and wears on you and wears on you, man. And Calipari ain't getting any younger. Um, I don't know exactly how old he is. Let me see. He is 65 years old, so it's not like he's old by any means, but uh, in coaching years, it's like 85. <laughs> so especially at Kentucky, you age about five years at a time at Kentucky, especially when you have a down year. So – Maybe it was time for him to move on, but yeah, I was still shocked that he's going to Arkansas. Like in conference, um, Arkansas, a program who has a bunch of history in it. I mean, look, Arkansas is not your just you know throwaway basketball school. Arkansas has had some had some good things. Not go the on. kind of history that pulls you away from Kentucky. Not the kind of history that pulls you away from Kentucky. Usually, you're getting oh, pulled I mean, away from Arkansas to Kentucky. Yeah. Like it's not the other way around. But, yeah, so this is just a little bit – that that I think that's what threw everybody off was the fact that he's leaving, you know, maybe the bluest of blue bloods in college basketball to to an Arkansas program who has, has history but is not considered a blue blood of college basketball. Like, yeah. you don't leave North Carolina to go to North Carolina State. You don't – you know what I mean? You don't leave North Carolina to go coach it – to go coach at South Carolina. Or, or Clemson, same conference. Uh, so, like, you could you could see someone leaving North Carolina to go coach at Syracuse or Duke. Syracuse is more of a lateral move. Duke is like a unilateral sure. move. Um, but play, it's not yeah, a – Those long time – Yeah, those are, the, those are the blue bloods of this sport. But, yeah, but nobody's going all, to Miami from North Carolina. Those are all side to side. I mean, those are right. lateral. Uh, right. th- those are the pinnacle of the sport. Yeah. Uh, but Coach Cal's been there for more than a decade and has done it one way. Yeah. And then really went all in uh, when the one and duns went away with going and getting a bunch of freshmen every year. Every and he year. said this year that he's going to continue to do that. And, and Kentucky's one of the only places where you can continue to do that. And I think he loses early again and says, I need a new way and I can't do it here at Kentucky because of the expectation to go get yeah. freshmen and to go get McDonald's all Americans and just load your roster up with them, put them in the NBA. I think I need to do something new and I'm going to do it at a new place. Yeah. And it's odd to say there's less expectation at Arkansas because there's going to be a huge expectation because huge. of who he is because the of money. what they spent. And because of the NIL, but Arkansas was already a place that transfers were going with Muss. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's out of the range of possibilities that Coach Cow will get a ton of players interested in going to Arkansas, especially with those deep pockets that he now has. They've guaranteed $15 million. I guess he was making, what, 10 I think, at Kentucky? Yeah, close to, yeah. Do you think he took a pay cut? Do you think they matched that? I don't think he got a raise to go to Arkansas. Yeah, I don't know that he's taking that much of a pay cut, if it's anything, but maybe a little bit. Um, but like I said, like I, I think it, it – and for Coach Calipari, a guy that's made a ton of money, the guy that's been around it, done it for a long time, I don't know that money is that big of a deal. It's just kind of – I feel like he was ready for something new, and – I think Kentucky fans, that's why you're not seeing – I haven't seen a ton of Kentucky people just pissed off about They're this. They're all done with him. Right. Yeah. They so fired. that's this what is, I mean. So a win-win. Depending on who the coach this, is, it's a win-win. Yeah, exactly. It's it's a win-win for the Kentucky fan group, fan base. Now, obviously, the players don't want the guy that they signed to come play for leaving. Um, 
which in today's day and age, they might all very well end up at Arkansas. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I just, I think it's a win-win for both, for both parties, for Calipari. He gets out, he gets a fresh start in Arkansas. Um, you know, there's expectations there, but it's not final four expectations. It's like get to the second weekend expectations. Right. And then, and then of course, Texas tech is kind of in this boat too. Like you get to a final four one time and a couple of elite eights and a couple sweet 16s. And now everybody's just pissed off when you don't win, when you get into the NCAA tournament and lose, everybody's pissed. Yeah. But I think Calipari's expectations follow it. I mean, I think I think so. I think you're right it, to yeah. some extent. Yeah, but college basketball has changed a lot since Calipari had a lot of his success as well. That and so, you and it's the same have thing. And logical expectations in sports, no, especially not at Arkansas. Arkansas is point. notorious. I mean, uh, you make Arkansas a good point. On Twitter, yeah. is notorious for having unreasonable and unlogical expectations <laughs> of coaches. So I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying you're wrong at all. I'm just saying that college basketball, the way that Calipari and Krzyzewski and Bayheim and, you know, all those guys, Roy Williams, and there's only one of those names left, by the way, and that's John Calipari, who's still doing it, because the other three were like, screw this. You know, we've done our thing. We've won our games. We've made our money. It's time for us to get out because the game is changing at such an alarming rate that they didn't want to keep up with the game and they didn't want to not do what they had built their programs on, right? Like you have to change everything in the way that you coach. And I think Scott Drew is realizing that um, at Baylor, especially with the NIL situation at Baylor. And Scott Drew is number one, maybe number one on a lot of lists for the Kentucky job as well. Um that name is going to come up quite a bit, I think, uh, to get the to be the new head man at, at Kentucky, and because that comes with a lot of NIL. And Scott Drew is very good at getting freshmen on campus as well to go along with really good grad transfers and really good portal guys who can create a really good nucleus of a team. And what Scott Drew did this year at Baylor was bring in Langston Love and, and a couple other good, really good freshmen to go along with his his group of of you know, upperclassmen. And that's without any NIL money. That's without any, and I say any, he has a little bit, but not as much as what all these other schools, not as much as what Kentucky has. So a guy like a Scott Drew is going to be a name that you see thrown around. I don't think Kentucky's going to go out and just get some young guy um, that's, you know, no. like at, at, you're not going to go get the guy that's, that's had some success at some small school and taking, you know, fairly Dickinson to an elite eight or a final four, whatever. Uh, it's just not going to be that kind of guy. It's not going to be a Porter Moser type of guy that Oklahoma went and got a couple of years ago from Loyola. So it's going to be a name. Like they're going to go get someone who has some credibility and some wins and a national title or more on their resume. It's not going to be someone who you just beat around the bush about and, and uh, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Now, look, the last time a job like this opened up and a Kansas coach was kind of struggling a little bit and needed new pastures, Roy Williams bounced to North Carolina. Now he had some history at North Carolina as well. Sure. But Bill Self, what does Kentucky think about going out and getting a Hall of Famer already in Bill Self? Like, I don't know. With who's to say they don't just throw money at him? He's in and out. I think Kansas could match probably. I think Scott oh, Drew yeah, could name. Match. Uh, the, there was an NBA coach that got a lot of run with the Texas tech job, Billy Donovan. Yeah. That's Billy Donovan. Name yeah. Quite a bit. Well, he's, he's the last coach to win back-to-back -back national titles in college basketball. Joe Kim Noah and the Florida Gators until tonight, until tonight when UConn does it. Yeah. And I think that's another conversation to have. Can you money whip Dan Hurley? Because he's the best in the yeah. world. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. No, be, no doubt about it. Much of a conversation. If Kentucky wants to say, we're the greatest job in existence. Uh, we'll talk to you on Tuesday, Dan yeah. Early. That's a that's a conversation that probably will be had. It might be short. With and Dan that's another I, blue I, blood I, to blue blood transition right there too. I think UConn probably the most underrated blue blood because they're the best that's team in agreed. basketball since the nineties. Yeah, uh, consistently. Yeah, Jim Calhoun and and all those even even the years in between Jim Calhoun and uh, Hurley. I can't remember who the coach was um, between, but he won a national title too, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Did. Kevin Ollie. Kevin Ollie. Yeah. 
That's who it was. So you're talking about teams that just a team in UConn who wins national titles, who wins Big East titles. Jim Calhoun just put uh, UConn on the map. Like really, they were never bad in a row. Now look, college basketball sometimes you're just not going to have a good season. But yeah, UConn's a blue blood in the college basketball realm. But are they at the same level as Kentucky? No. Like Kentucky, in my mind, if you were to, and this isn't a Wednesday, but we're not on a Wednesday. It's a Monday. Here's their overreaction power rankings. If you were to tell me the top three college basketball teams in the history of college basketball, it'd be Kentucky, Kansas, UCLA, maybe North Carolina's up there too, and Duke. Those are the top five. But Duke really wasn't anybody until Mike Shashevsky stepped onto the court for the for the Blue Devils in in the nineties. Duke, Duke with is, Christian Leitner. Duke is Coach K. Yeah, Duke is Coach K. Coach K uh, put Duke on the map. All right, since 1999, you ready? Yeah. UCLA, zero championships. They have 11 yeah. all the time. They've, they've been to a couple Final Fours since then. Kentucky yeah. won national championships. They won in 98. Yeah. Uh, but one since 1999. 2012. North Carolina, three since 1999. 05, 09, 17. Yeah. Duke with three since 1999. Indiana, zero. UConn, all five. 99, 04, 11, 14, 23. They're about to get a 6-1 tonight if they win. Yeah. Kansas, two since 99. Villanova, two since 99. Florida, two since 99. Those are back-to-back. Nobody else with more than three. And UConn has five. Yeah. And they're about to. At least they're favored to when they're six. A sixth tonight. That, that is UConn is the best college basketball program since the year. Let's call it two thousand, but nineteen ninety nine. Since the millennia changed, one. yeah. And they've been consistently that way. Now they're not a Power Five program, but they're a Power Six program, and that's recognized in college basketball. They've been in the Big East. They've been a blue blood of the Big East. Teams have risen up against them. Villanova. Other teams, Georgetown, uh, but UConn has remained at the top of that league in uh, whatever iterations it's gone through over the last twenty years, and wherever <laughs> UConn's been. Well, they had to be in the American a few years, but then the Big East came back. Thank goodness. And and they've been there, and they've been at the top of it. And uh, Dan Hurley has taken them to new heights with back-to-back national championship appearances. And if Kentucky wants to make a splash, I guess it's Billy Donovan or Dan Hurley. Yeah. Uh, people keep saying that Bob, Billy Donovan wants to be back in the college game. Does he? He's had opportunities. People keep yeah, saying yeah. Dan Hurley would leave UConn. Will he? He's won two in a row. Why would he leave? Yeah. Why would you? Why would you not? Why would you leave when something's going so great? Right. By the I way, mean, H- Hammer Chris Purdue Beard did that, but Hammer Purdue with everything I just said. Yeah, I'm definitely. I've already Hammer? taken Purdue with everything. Be- <laughs> well, I have this this idea that. All of my picks didn't pan out at all, so maybe I don't want to pick Purdue oh, tonight okay. because I put so much into the Boilermakers okay. so far. <laughs> uh, yeah. Allegedly. Allegedly put so much. But, uh, yeah, I and, you know, another name out there that's hot right now is Kelvin Sampson and what he's done at Houston. Oh, um, he's old too. But he's old. Yeah, how many years is he going to give you? And do you want his son to be the up-and-coming, you know, uh, it's kind of like the Tubby Houston Smith, Saul Smith thing. Wouldn't Houston hire him? You think yeah, yeah. Dead? yeah, I think I think Houston would hire um, Kelvin's son. What's his son? Now I can't even remember. Kevin? <laughs> That's <not> really close. <laughs> it's, not, it's not Kevin. <laughs> I think I it's something really close to Kelvin. Uh, but anyway, yeah. I, uh, you also keep saying Jay Wright. If he wanted to be a coach, he'd be – at Villanova still. I just Yeah, Jay Wright. Jay Wright's enjoying his retirement, enjoying sitting on a yeah. desk talking about basketball on Saturdays and Sundays and then during the NCAA tournament. Yeah. Yeah. He's not going anywhere. Especially to Kentucky. The other the other name I've seen a ton is Nate Oates. Nate Oates is a is a good candidate. He's won everywhere he's been. Can't stand the guy. I I hate how his teams act and play and, and all those things, but you can't you can't deny that he has been very good 
at the places he's been, especially what he's done at Alabama is really yeah. nice. Wrote a few more names down. Uh, I saw Arizona coach Tommy Lloyd named a couple of times. Uh, Brad Underwood always gets named when a coaching search opens up. I don't think I don't think Kentucky fans would be happy with either of those. No. And then you always have to add an Iowa State coach. So uh, <laughs> Matt Campbell or TJ Otzelberger, one of the two. They'd probably I go mean, with TJ. TJ Otzelberger, another another name that is probably going to come up for a lot of jobs in the next few years. But I think what he's got at Iowa State is something that he wants to continue to to build. It's kind of like Matt Campbell, what he's done at Iowa State in the football realm. Like he wants to see things through. He's made a you know a promise and and all those things. And that's not it's it's hard to find in today's college basketball, college sports in general. It's just a coach who will stick with the guys that they made they made those promises to. So. We'll see. Money talks, though. I don't think Otzelberger is going to Kentucky, though. I'll put it that way. No, I, I don't think. I, so, I, th I think it's two men that you give the job offer to before you go to anybody else. And Dan Hurley's number one. Scott Drew is probably number two, um, just because of the resume those two dudes have. All right, let's um, say Scott Drew goes to Kentucky. Okay. Who goes to Baylor? <laughs> Uh, good question. I mean, there's two candidates, right? Good question. Who are you bringing home? You're bringing home Jerome Tang. Yeah. Who are you bringing home Grant McCaslin. Grant McCaslin. Yeah. Or, or do you just go off the reservation into a guy who had success at LSU and had a lot of success in his first year at McNeese and Will Wade? No way. Baylor hires a coach with a scandal. I'm just saying. No just way. Saying. Baylor, Baylor will keep just it saying. clean. No. Jerome Tang dropped a <laughs> I'm staying at Kansas State video with worship music in the background. That guy is Baylor Bold. Yeah. Would they would they get Grant McCaslin though? Would would they would Baylor go I mean, after a guy who who's the, who's the better coach? Good question. I don't they know. Both, they both have had a level of success. At the yeah. D1 level, Kansas State has had more success uh, because they've had two years, but they didn't even make the tournament this year. They went to, went the, to the Elite Eight, eight last eight year. The year before. Yeah. Jerome Tang was at Baylor longer. Yeah. Grant McCaslin just went to Baylor. He never actually, yeah. He was he was a grad assistant. He was, uh, well, a grad assistant, assistant, whatever it was, but he, he yeah. played for Scott Drew, didn't he? Did he play for Scott Drew or did he that play for – That probably was before. Yeah. He played for uh, the murderer or the yeah. cover-up the cover up artist. Dwee. Either way, both both have Baylor in their past. I, I, I would assume Baylor would start there. I don't know why you would leave either school for Baylor unless you're just trying to get back to Baylor. Uh, I don't believe Jerome Tang is married to a Red Raider, though. No. No, he's not. He could be. He could be. I don't think he is. Jerome Tang is not married to a Red Raider, no. Uh, let's see. I Again, Scott Drew has been named in, like, every big opening they they yeah. loved him for the Louisville job. Yeah, they, Grant McCaslin played for uh, Scott or Dave Bliss. Yeah, yeah. No, I didn't want to say his name. Murder, yeah. murder suspect. He's uh, coaching junior college basketball right now. Is he really? Yeah. Yeah, he started. Or no, he started Baylor. No three. McCaslin was ninety nine. Yeah. And he was at Baylor as an assistant from eleven to sixteen back in back at Baylor. Mm -hmm. well, you, Dave Bliss is out of coaching now. He's eighty years old. Yeah, I was about to say his last two stops were at Southwest Christian and Calvary Chapel Christian School. Those sound like high schools. Uh, Southwest Christian is an NAI school in the Red River Athletic Conference. Interesting. Calvary Chapel, I would assume, is a high school. 
Scott Drew, you ready for this? Yeah. Misses the tournament completely in his first four seasons. Uh, eight and 21, nine and 19, four and 13, 15, 16. Obviously took over a program in disarray. Yeah, they had no scholarships, really. No scholarships, uh, death penalty, whatever it was. In 2008, he wins his 20 games for the first time. They've only not won 20 games two times since. In 2011, they missed the tournament. And then in 2018, they went to the NIT second round. Other than that, uh, first round exit in the NCAA tournament, NIT runner-up, NCAA Elite Eight, Elite Eight, NIT champion, Sweet 16, first round exit, first round exit, Sweet 16, NIT, second round of the NCAA tournament, national champion, Mickey Mouse national champion. We all know it. Second round exit, second round exit, second round exit. Does he really have the resume? I know he has a national championship. Does he really have the resume that screams Kentucky? Kentucky? Uh, I mean, more so than any other guy that's out there. Like a, you know, we mentioned like the TJ Otzelbergers and, and those kind of guys of the world. Like, yeah. he's got more, more pull than those. He's got one more national championship than Nate Oates. He's sure. got a lot more tournament appearances than Nate Oates. Um, he's got another. He's got another national title over Chris Beard. Chris Beard is a name that probably will get thrown around in there at some point too. I'm sure. Uh, I I don't um, think Chris Beard will ever be in the running for a true big job. Yeah. Until he is far enough away from his personal life to yeah make that happen. Ten years down the road, maybe. Yeah. Uh, depending on how he does it, his stops in that tenure. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really truly think that number one on the list is going to be Danny Hurley. Maybe so. Right. Like that's, that's the person you have to go after. I think Billy Donovan makes a lot of sense. I know he's Billy Donovan out. makes a lot of sense. Don't get me wrong, but he's, he's been not. out of the college game for a while well, and, but, and the college game has changed so much since he's been in it too. But what has it turned into? True, it's it's turned into professional basketball. So maybe he's maybe he's got. To, but you still have to go out and recruit. You don't just get to draft. You know, you and your GM don't get to sit in a room and say who you want to draft, and then you. You have to recruit. Yeah, not to Kentucky, I guess. You just walk in and say, "Hey, I'm Billy Donovan. I'm the head coach of Kentucky. Here's a scholarship." I look in college basketball. You have to get eight guys, right? Yeah. Six starters. Nine, if you five, want to be a five on the floor. Solid, I, know, I know how team. basketball yeah. works, but yeah, six start national championship teams have six starters, the six man of the year, whatever it is, and then you have two, three role quality, players, yeah, a couple more. You probably at most you have 10 guys that could start anywhere else, right? Yeah, in today's college basketball, you don't have to go out and get any high school kids, it's true, you don't have to recruit, it's true. And, Everyone at their first place will be begging to go to Kentucky for the next place. I'm telling you, if you can get two high school All-Americans, McDonald's, Gatorade Player of the Year, whatever it is, Adidas, Eibel, Nike, AAU star, two of those guys get a couple of buy-ins from some really good college basketball players that are going to be there three or four years as role players and then go get the best transfer class in the country every year, you can win a lot of games at Kentucky. You can. And if if Billy Donovan wants to do that, it's, it's not the grind that it was. Now, it might be more of a grind to keep a roster intact. But again, if you're dealing at these, at these one-of-a-kind stops, these unicorn stops, you don't have to retain everybody. You're rebuilding the roster every year anyway. So is it a different aspect? Yes. But also in today's college basketball world, you know, Kellen Buffington didn't exist 10 years ago, five years ago. Yeah, he true. didn't have a GM. The head coach was doing everything. Uh, Joey McGuire is the new brand of NCAA Division One head coach. He doesn't offer anybody. Now, is he recruiting? Yes. 
Is the staff recruiting? Yes. But is Coach Kitley offering anybody? Is Cochran offering anybody? No. The GM of the team is doing all of the offering. Yep. So even in the college world, people say Cliff won't ever come back. If Cliff had James Blanchard, he might have never left. Yes. <laughs> well, and the, that's the thing. You're right. Like, surround yourself with the people that know what they're doing, that know what their job is, that know what their role is. And if you find the right people in the right places that do their job at the very highest level, you will have success at the college level. And that's because you're hiring people that know what they're supposed to be doing, right? Like, like you bring in a guy like a James Blanchard to do exactly that, to go out and be your – be your spokesperson, if you will, to all these recruits saying, you know, I'm going to bring you to Texas Tech. You're going to get the, to know our coaching staff. You yeah. Grinding, yeah. Yeah. You're going to get to know our coaching staff. And then you're going to love being here in Lubbock. And these guys know what their job is when a recruit gets on campus. They know what their job is on a Saturday. And Joey McGuire, he's like, he's just, he's like a good NFL head coach, right? Like, that doesn't call plays, you know, Bill Belichick, it sometimes didn't have to call plays when Tom Brady was playing. Yeah. He managed, he was like a general manager he was of my, the whole team. He was micromanaging. He micromanaged everything. Yeah. But I'm trying to think of a, uh, a guy in the NFL who has a ton of success that like, and Mike Tomlin, he's a D he called defensive plays early in his career, but now Mike Tomlin just lets his guys coach. Yeah. And he, he just John takes Harbaugh. up all the back. Yeah. John Harbaugh. Great, great, uh -huh. ex, great CEO. explanation. Yeah. Yeah. CEO. That's exactly what Joey McGuire is. That's the word I was looking for. He's the CEO and James Blanchard is the guy that's the CFO or COO, whatever you want to call it. And he's running the show while but, Joey McGuire just points him in a direction. We keep talking about how college athletics is changing. And then we talk about college athletics like they always were. It's, it's changing. Yeah. We have to, we have to admit that and we have to see it. Yeah. It's, and I think it's, it's a good thing, thing too. It's not a grind. Point. It's not a grind for recruiting anymore if you're a head no. coach in basketball or football True. because of guys like uh, Blanchard. Buffington and, and Blanchard, now. yeah. Now, listen, it's still a grind. Joey McGuire's still out there grinding. He's yeah. coaching football. He's involved. Uh, They're still going to high schools, talking to coaches, yeah. Still involved. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's not the same as it was. It's not just one guy going out and doing everything. Billy Donovan – wouldn't be sacrificing his entire life to come back to college basketball. That's all I'm saying. Uh, all right, plenty of time on that. I I have uh, places to be and things to do, so let's talk about Tech Baseball. Uh, Tech Baseball winning six in a row. They won the last one against UCF, won two against Stanford, three against Houston. It was desperately needed. Uh, now you get one against ACU tomorrow. Uh, three against TCU got swept and run ruled by Cincinnati run ruled by Cincinnati. And then you get two at Arkansas. We talked about how huge this two week, three week stretch was. You're off on the right foot. Yeah. Now, was it pretty over the weekend? Hell no. <laughs> you almost <laughs> no, gave up but, two big ones, but, but you, you scored on. 39 runs and you won. And that's all yeah. that matters in college baseball. Yeah, yeah. Wind at this point, especially for teams like a Texas Tech who's been struggling a little bit, trying to find ways to win baseball games. Like at UCF, you found ways to lose a couple baseball games, and then you found a way to win one on Sunday. Um, but the first two days, UCF figured out ways to win baseball games. Like at this point in the season, this level of college baseball, it's all about winning baseball games. Um, it, to some point, it matters how they look, but at the end of the year, when the committee is looking at you know who's who's who belongs in a regional and who doesn't, they're not looking at how did you win the ball game. They're looking at did you win or did you lose the game. So in college athletics, it's a big deal, um, and especially like midweeks. We talk about midweeks all the time, like they don't really matter a ton. They don't really matter for teams that are at the top of their conferences, like in Arkansas or, you know, a Clemson, somebody like that who's playing really well in conference. Midweeks aren't that big of a deal. If they drop a midweek to, you know, the Citadel at Clemson, like if they were to go to the Citadel and play and drop one, not a big deal. Helps the Citadel. Doesn't really hurt Clemson that much uh, because then they go sweep the ACC team that they play and they're still in the top of the RPI. So, but for a team like Texas Tech, 
where they're kind of on the precipice of of being a team that's out completely or a team that's you know fighting their way back into the regional talk. Wins are wins, losses are losses. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Midweeks are important now because you can't you can't afford to lose to ACU just like you couldn't afford to lose to Stanford in the midweek this past week. You found ways to do that and to win two games against Stanford wasn't pretty. Um, the offense was great in the Stanford series, the two gamer in the midweek. Now you get ACU in a midweek, and then you go to TCU, who is struggle busting it after. And, and TCU's two like Jekyll and Hyde teams, right? You sweep Houston the weekend before, and then you go and you get swept by Cincinnati. They're way more Jekyll than Hyde, whichever one's there. Yeah, I agree. And, I agree. And 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 then Texas Tech is going to have to go figure out how to win two. If you can win two at TCU, I think you got a real good shot and continue to play good baseball. Yeah. Now, they still need to figure out pitching. Pitching's still a kind of a Achilles heel of this team. Uh, Josh Sanders, Parker Hutera. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm trusting those guys in a regional. If you can I get, agree. If you can get to one, yeah. Now, I agree. Talking about getting to regionals, uh, you're for sure going to be in the Big 12 tournament. Yeah. Uh, are we going to see TCU even in the Big 12 tournament? I mean, they're at risk. They are. They are at risk. They, if you, if anyone's got their back against the wall is TCU and you're playing them this weekend. Uh, uh, blessing and curse. And curse, yeah. Uh, we'll talk about that as we go along. I, I sent you a text there, Carson. I'm going to have to take a dip here. Uh, but we can go final thoughts here and a prediction on UConn Purdue. We teased it earlier. UConn minus six and a half. Uh, what are your thoughts on that UConn Purdue game? Uh, give me Purdue just because, uh, or no, give me UConn, uh, just because I think it'd be cool if they repeat, but I also think it'd be cool if Purdue wins because, uh, the money line looked good. Hey, Matt Painter. Yeah. Matt Painter's a good story. <laughs> yeah. Matt Painter's a great dude too. Been at Purdue for 20 years. Paint it on baby. Uh, was good early and then an absolute loser for the last yeah. five or six, 10 years. In tournaments, lots of regular season success. Purdue stuck with him, and it could pay off. And I like coaches who are there for a long time, finally paying off. It's a good And story. I like Zach Eady, too. Uh, Zach Eady has, by the way, been around on social media in the last couple of days and been around at uh, some parties, it seems like, as well, <laughs> if you've seen those uh, shots. He also... One thing about Zach Eady, that guy was like, oh, I'm foreign. I can't make NIL money. Dude, you're Canadian. Yeah, you're Canadian. You're cashing the same checks as everyone else. They're just in a bank account somewhere until you pick it up. Yep. You're not losing out on anything. You, you're you just not flush right now. But that guy's getting paid. Uh, yeah, you're, all your money's in Nova Scotia, wherever he's from. But that anyway, seems yeah. pretty disingenuous. Yeah, I'm not I, concerned about his Unless your age has fleeced you. Uh, which has happened. Yeah, get a better NIL agent. <laughs> but uh, that dude's making money. It's just he's not flush with it right now. Yeah, he might have lost a deal or two, maybe. But I don't. I don't feel sorry for him at all. He's making a bunch of money. No, no, I don't feel bad for him. Go, yeah, go. Be, either go way, I don't really care who wins tonight. I just think that either either storyline is a great storyline for college basketball, right? Sure. Yeah. Like there will be yeah. 70, 80,000 people in the University of Phoenix or whatever it's called, State Farm Stadium now. Um, and it'll be a good atmosphere. Two number ones, no Cinderella's. Yeah, two number ones, just the way you wanted it. Just like everybody wants. All right. Uh, sweet. We will recap ACU and that game on Wednesday and uh, talk more about TCU baseball, who absolutely sucks. No, uh, no Ludwig. Lupton Ludwig. Lupton Drinking Club. Lupton Drinking Club today. We'll have to find out where they are. Maybe maybe we need him to come in on uh, on Friday to uh, preview yeah. the series. Yeah, we can do that if he's you know available. If, I mean, if they're might, alive, yeah. If they're he, alive. he might have shut down his internet so he can't see TT <laughs> lose anymore. I don't know. We'll see. If we'll do a wellness check. There's like yeah, we'll do. Guys. Surely we can get one. Yeah, we'll do a wellness check on Lupton at some point this week. We'll figure out one of them to come on with us. Yeah. Uh, if not, uh, if not, Mr. Sailors and uh, Ray, I'm sure would. There you go. Uh, and they'll pick TCU to sweep. Oh yeah. 
It's what Why they wouldn't they? It's what they do. That's what they do. All right. We will see you Wednesday. Yep. Peace.